has a 7-0 lead on the Appalachian State Mountaineers. Key that Sam Smith took the opening drive, marched methodically down the field. Lester with a one-yard touchdown run. Now we'll see what Appalachian can do. It was a very well-controlled drive as well. Appalachian State, their linebackers who are a great group of three, almost totally taken out of all the defensive scheme. A good drive by VMI. Now, as they say in tennis, it's volleyed into ASU's court now. Harris with the kick. And back to the 21-yard line, but no more is the kick returner for Appalachian State. That was John Duncan. Sam, let's take a look at our U.S. Air keys to the game. Well, I don't think there's any secrets. There's certainly that Thomas Askins has to have the big day today. You saw a brief look at him. And, of course, he's rights for nearly 600 yards against Appalachian State in the last three games. Key on Scott defensively, but you've got to force him to throw the ball. If Appalachian State can put a little wrinkle by throwing the ball, they could be the upper hand. They've got a gamble defense to force Haskins into making a state along with the quarterback Lester. In that first drive, they did not do so. Appalachian, Bake Baker with the handoff. This is Damon Scott, and Scott powers his way out to nearly first down yardage. It's a gain of nine, and Damon Scott's coming off a terrific effort last week against Western Carolina. Scored all three touchdowns for the Appalachian State Mountaineers in that 24-17 win. And he's another young man who's really starting to come on as the season begins to wind down. There you see the scoring play, the uh, scoring drive. 14 plays in that drive, took five and a half minutes off the clock. Lester capped it with a one-yard touchdown run. Second and less than a yard. Baker has a man wide open behind the defense. And for Appalachian, Kevin Burton. Burton inside the 10, can he score? Knocked out of bounds at the one-yard line. That's a 69-yard pass and run. Baker to Burton. Well, we said they had to get a wrinkle. That was anything but a blemish there because they set it up beautifully, bringing Scott into the middle. As he pointed out, Burton was wide open. All of the linebackers had collapsed inside looking for Scott and left the corners coming up supporting on both corners and wide open, and Burton did the rest. I tell you what, he came close to breaking that plane as he dove in. I uh, ruled out of bounds at the one-yard line. That could be a big comeback for ASU. He did step out of bounds at the one before going in. Cornell Lewis with a touchdown saving tackle 69 yarders for the senior from Columbia South Carolina here's Damon Scott Scott touchdown Appalachian and for Damon Scott that's his 13th rushing touchdown of the year and apps right back in this game I don't know if you play tennis or not Dave but sometimes when you rip a good serve and a guy rips it back for a winner on you ASU has just done that as VMI served it well. Appalachian State just drilled it for a winner. Scott, just like uh, Haskins, a key player for them, and he takes it in for the score. Jay Sutton is at, on to add the extra point. Alan Gwynn is the holder. And the kick is good, and we're all even. 8.35 to go in the opening period. Appalachian matches VMI's touchdown with a touchdown of their own. We're tied at seven. You need a passport to travel. Off-road travel, that is. The Honda Passport is your key no matter which path you take. With nine different models to choose from, the Honda Accord offers sleek sophistication as well as variety. And don't overlook the Honda Civic. It's not so small anymore. With its spacious cabin and more power than ever before, it's bound to stand out. And remember, you've got my word that a Don Smith Honda will beat anybody's price on a new Honda, guaranteed. coaching was going to be easy. VMI and Appalachian tied at seven, eight and a half minutes to go in the first period. Bill Stewart saw his team methodically march down the field with a 14-play drive. 
after the opening kickoff to take the lead, but Appalachian used a 69-yard pass and run from Baker to Kevin Burton to set up a one-yard touchdown run by Damon Scott, and we're all even again at seven. It'll be interesting to see what uh, BMI offensively can do and what adjustments they've been able to make for that uh, Appalachian State defense. You know, Ruffin McNeil has says, hey, fellas, we got to do something about Haskins. We geared for him all week long. What happened? And, you know, they're going to make some adjustments. We'll see how the two clubs react here on their second position for BMI. Gwynn set to kick off. Farabee and Hopkins set to receive it. And once again, Gwynn shoots it into the end zone. And for the second consecutive kickoff, Gwynn puts VMI at their own 20-yard line. Good job. You know, Dave, Gwynn was a big key in almost uh, coming up with a, a decent game against Marshall. Certainly, he won that in a great battle between the two kickers. And he's been sensational all year, the All-Southwest Conference kicker, not only punting the ball, but they are not giving VMI any kind of runback possibility. So we'll see how VMI answers the long touchdown pass and run by Damon Scott on their second possession. Play action by the junior quarterback Lester. Lots of time and the pass is nearly picked off. The pass was intended for Ellen and Ken Bird broke on the ball well, knocked it away and nearly picked it off. Dave, I think one of the keys to that play not only was Bird closing on it, but that ball hung in the air simply because Lister threw the ball a little quicker than he wanted to. Watch number 96 coming from the outside here. That's Jeff Green, and he forces him to let go, and he knew he was coming. Look how wobbly that pass Whoa. is. It gave Bird a chance to close on Eller and knocks it away incomplete. Bird's back in the lineup today after missing the last three games with a hamstring problem. Second down and 10, and here comes Haskins, and again he tries the left side, and this time... Dexter Copley, big 32 in black, wrestles him down after a two-yard gain. Dexter Copley, one of the best linebackers ever in 1AA football. Been a lot said about Copley. Will he be big enough to play in the NFL? He's only 5'11", size-wise, but he's got enormous calves and, of course, works with the upper body. Look how well he reacts off the ground there after the hit was made by Payne. Coakley closes in a hurry to finish the job. Yeah, we talk about Dexter Coakley. That was really the question about Coakley coming out of high school, whether he'd be big enough to play linebacker. He's answered that in spades. Diving catch made at the 39-yard line. That's a first down. And making the catch that time is Ed Pearson, the freshman from Hampton, Virginia. He came to VMI to play baseball. He could play a little football, too. Well, now Lester just simply has to go to, to Pearson and say, hey, thanks for that one, because that ball was well out in front of him. Lester going to his right had a little bit too much zip on it, and despite the rug burn, he comes up with a huge catch there for VMI as they move for another first down. First down and for VMI. Keedets on their second possession of the ball game, operating from the eye. Pearson, who just made the big catch, comes in motion to the wide side. The handoff goes to the fullback, White. White is across the 40 and down to the 42-yard line. A gain of three. Matt Swearhead has our sideline story today. Let's head down to the sidelines. What's up, Matt? Good afternoon. Thanks, Dave. It is getting a bit colder down here right now. I'm with Janine Collins, who's the uh, member of the Yosef Club, executive director of the board of directors. And uh, Janine, explain the Yosef Club, what it does, and the role it plays in ASU athletics. The Yosef Club is a group of people that support Appalachian to their highest and best ability. Uh, the Yosef Club gives scholarships for student athletes. That's all we do. We support our student athletes. We have a fine athletic program here, and we have a lot to be proud of. And so we have a good group that supports us. As the president-elect of the Board of Advisors, what is your role? You are a volunteer, and there's other volunteers that work with the board, right? Yes, sir, there are. And I, I represent Appalachian officially at Rousers, and and I raise money for Appalachian, which is a great thing to do. Oh, great. Congratulations on your new position, and good luck this year. Thank you very much. Let's go back upstairs to Dave and Sam. All right, Matt, thank you very much. And this play is coming back. A nice gainer for Thomas Haskins is going to come off the board. Ron Buckner is our official today from Fort Mill, Holy South Carolina. On the offense, 10-yard penalty, spot of the foul, replay second down. Well, maybe that explains why the hole is so big. That happened so far behind the play, too, because Haskins was already through the line of scrimmage. And coming up and doing the holding well behind the play that time was uh, Cal Christensen, 
He made the hole. As a matter of fact, did it on Carson, but again, Haskins was already about 10 or 12 yards downfield. And for the first time today, VMI will go with three wide receivers on second down and 18 from their own 31-yard line. And here's the handoff to Lester, and Lester fights his way across the left side up to the 36-yard line. That's a gain of five, but it'll be third down and about 13. By the way, Dave, we'd like to extend congratulations to Furman. That 42-21 win by them automatically puts them, I believe, in the playoffs for your pairing show coming at 1 o'clock on Sports South tomorrow. And again, a great year for Bobby Johnson and Furman and the Paladins. Again, winning at home 42-21 over uh, UT Chattanooga today. Walford in the Citadel. They're tied in the third period now. Five minutes to go. Tied at 14 down in Charleston. Boy, you talk about a, a great college football Saturday. We have a lot of terrific season-ending matchups. The Iron Bowl is tonight. Auburn and Alabama. Michigan defeated Ohio oh. State so, this afternoon at the Horseshoe in Columbus. Lester holding. Let's it go. He picks up his secondary target, the tight end, and it's a first down to the 50-yard line. So VMI converts a third and 13. They get the football to the tight end, Greg Harris. Lester did a good job that time, Sam, checking off his primary receiver and going to the tight end. Well, that man right there, Greg Harris, has to be given credit because he was on a little curl to the outside. Watch as Lister looks that way. His first option is up the middle. He's trying to look for Greg Ellen over the middle. Then has to come to the sideline, and there comes Harris back to help him out, makes the big catch in a first down. And there again, just as they had with Pearson with a big catch, that's another big one for the Kidettes. VMI, five for five in the early going on first down. And now we see Haskins, and probably for the first time today, Sam, we see him try the right side, and he finds marginal success, bangs it down to the Appalachian State 46-yard line. That's a gain of four. It'll be second down and sixth. And right now, even though this game is tied, Jerry Moore's got a problem. He's got to find a way to stop Thomas Haskins, stop this Kidette running attack. Well, the one thing that he did there was to string it out. At least it made Haskins look like a little pinball there for a moment. And that's got to be the key. You may not get a clean shot at him, but you've got to get some kind of body on him. you got to keep bumping him to the outside. Or if he runs in the middle, you got to funnel him towards your linebackers, and they have got to get more active in the game. Boy, Haskins really doesn't wear down. Last week, 38 carries, 277 yards, four touchdowns. Lester, this time, the pocket collapses, and so does he. He goes down, and that'll officially go as a sack. And Joe DiBernardo. DiBernardo is a rock-solid linebacker here at Appalachian. Really doesn't get all the press he deserves because he and the rest of his defensive teammates play in the shadow of Dexter Copley. Looks like he's got a couple of uh, legs hanging out of his shirt sleeves there as he really works in the upper body. And again, as you pointed out, he plays in the shadow. Even for that matter, against Hodge, the other senior linebacker as well, DiBernardo has had himself a great career here. Another one of those seniors, along with Copley, they're looking at. Now, DiBernardo is getting a little more look when they come looking at Copley. They say, huh, 6'2", 228, runs well. This might be another guy that can go in the NFL draft as well. I like Joe DiBernardo. This is Lester, and Lester is into the secondary, and he takes it down to the 32-yard line. So that's a gain of 16. It just goes to show, the moment I start to pump up the Appalachian defense, Lester bangs into the secondary for a nice gainer. By the way, I noticed that. We're not flying on the same plane home, I'll tell you <laughs> that for sure. Here is one of those situations. Look, they're getting Haskins happy. Watch the support on the outside. See the corners are already up on the corner, and Lester reading that good block in the front line, and I tell you what, the offensive line of VMI has not missed a beat. They're still doing a good job. Lester reading it well and cuts inside for the big gainer again. Four minutes to go, first period. Lester doing well, five carries, 24 yards. On first and ten, Lester has a lot of time. Finally, the, the protection does break down, and the pass is intercepted. Gordon Federson knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. Lester was trying to get the football to the tight end. Federson came up and made the interception. And so Appalachian State's defense causes the turnover. Again, you see some pressure for Lester coming right up the middle. He has to kind of have some happy feet and threw off his back heel. And it was behind uh, the tight end that time. And uh, Harris couldn't hang on to it. Federson comes up, makes the intercept, and takes it back. And Gordon, uh, again, a good run up the sidelines. And again, one of the keys to the secondary. Not a lot of receivers out there for Lester to look. Once he looks off his prime receiver, he's a little uh, hard up to try to find another. Harris tried to bail him out, but again, the tip ball, and that's the unfortunate intercept for Lester, a big one for ASU. Fourth pickoff of the year 
for Lester. Tenth interception of the season for Appalachian. And this is Burton. And Burton takes it into VMI territory, runs it down to the 43-yard line. And that's a first down and a pickup of 13. And so Burton's been an early star for ASU. Particularly when Appalachian State relies so much on Otis Smith, who's their split receiver. Haven't used the tight end Volmer all that much. They swing it to Scott. They'll swing it a little bit to Young out of the backfield. But uh, coming up with 290 yards coming into the game, Burton with that one long catch to set up the opening score. Nice little swing out there, and there was nobody around him. So Burton early on with more than 80 receiving yards, and we still have three and a half minutes to go in the first period. This is Scott, and Scott runs right into the teeth of that VMI defense, and there is nowhere to go. You can see the difference between the two running backs. Haskins kind of bides his time, kind of jitterbugs around looking for the hole. Scott more than likely ducks his head a little more than Haskins and just tries to run over you. That, of course, is the big difference in the two running backs. Scott does not match the speed of Haskins. He does have much more power inside the tackles, though. Andre Curtis came up and made the stop. That's a strong linebacking core. Mike Rogers also back there, number 45, the defensive player of the week in the Southern Conference. Had 17 stops last week against the Citadel. Damon Scott picking his way and VMI's defense picks him up and puts him down and that's Kelly Cook and Kelly Cook has really come on at VMI he was moved from the linebacking spot to the defensive end and that seemed to be the key for the Keydets defense after that move their sack totals picked up and they got a little bit more aggressive on defense I'm always uncomfortable with a down defensive lineman wearing number six, but nonetheless, yeah. Cook. Six sacks for him already. You know, he had a great spring that kind of got him off and running on a good year, and he's one of their top tacklers with 87 coming to this game today. Two wide receivers to the wide side. Otis Smith is split out wide. Now Burton comes in motion on third down and six. They'll swing pass to Scott out of the backfield. Damon Scott trying to work his way down the field, knocked out of bounds, 31-yard line, and that is enough for a first down. Coming over to make the stop was Carnell Winfield. But it is a first down for Appalachian. Another this, look. This must be, this may be one of the better spots you can get the ball to Scott. You just swing it outside, let him do what he needs to do. Got a little uh, influence block there, does the best as he steps around and steps out. Yes, he can run in the tackles, just more or less a forceful runner. Getting the open field, he does not have the speed of Haskins I mentioned, but he does use it with good quick footwork. Appalachian with a, a unique formation this time. One back with a pair of wings on first down and 10. Little inside handoff action down to the 26-yard line. And that is Kareem Young, the sophomore from Tampa. Kind of an odd formation. It was indeed uh, almost another one of those little wrinkles they were throwing there. That, that was Leatherwood, number 39, one of their wide receivers. Was kind of stuttering and then went into motion. And just a little cross buck right across the middle, trying to catch the defense influenced by Scott and by the man in motion. They did get a few yards out of it, but again, another little wrinkle out of the offense there. So Young with a four-yard pickup, second down and six. We're down to 90 seconds and counting in the first quarter. Game tied at seven. Second down and six from the 26. And this is Scott. Scott trying to break it outside and nowhere to go. Defensed very well that time by VMI. And coming up for the key deaths, that's Jordan Clark, the sophomore from Dallas, Texas, to make the tackle. Well, he missed the entire uh, the year last year with a knee injury, so he's really very excited about the year he's been able to have. Young man from Richardson just outside of Dallas. And again, an All-Stater in 93, didn't have a chance to play, so you know he was salivating at the opportunity of playing, and he has played very well for the key deaths at that uh, defensive right end spot. Big third down play now. Third down and six at the 26. Three wide receivers for Appalachian. Appalachian's had a problem this year on third down conversions, just under 33% for the year, but they pick it up here. Baker with the pass, and coming up to make the catch was Woods, and Woods has the first down. Well, an interesting little swing pass here. Again, as you see, Bake Baker, who, by the way, made his first start against number one Marshall about four weeks ago, just swings it out to the near side, and again, getting it out to a man that a lot of people weren't anticipating to get a lot. Woods does catch it, and again, there's that little wrinkle, kind of laying it not so much to your number one receivers who had both broken over over the middle, by the way, and got it wide open for another good game for Appalachian State. So Appalachian now in the red zone, trying to cash in the interception by Federson. 
Baker three for three so far this afternoon for 57 yards. Here's the handoff to Damon Scott. Scott pushes the pile forward, does a nice job there keeping his legs turning and takes the football down to the 13-yard line. So that's a gain of four, second down and six, and that is going to do it for the first quarter of play here at Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. 15 minutes in the books will change ends of the field. Southern Conference football and sports south this afternoon. Appalachian State 7, VMI 7. Herman Moore, Detroit. Don Cornelius, I've come to ask you a favor. Don Cornelius, can you teach me to dance? What, like the funky chicken or the mashed potatoes? Oh, man, I like the hands on it. Free your mind, Herman. And your feet will follow. Take the oath. This is my planet. Herman, you sure you from Motown? The conference roundup of the ACC, ACC Sports Sunday. The show that provides the facts, the figures, and a complete review of the weekly sporting events. ACC Sports Sunday Fall Championship Special, live tomorrow on Sports Up. Mr. Jameson leads the North Carolina Tar Heels into battle as they host the Richmond Spiders. Live Monday on Sports Sound. Well, there's a nice panoramic view of Kid Brewer Stadium in Boone, North Carolina. Southern Conference football today. We're set to start the second quarter. VMI took the opening kickoff and marched 14 plays, 80 yards, and Al Lester one-yard touchdown run. Damon Scott countered that with a one-yard touchdown run of his own. VMI was moving the football very, very well. Then Gordon Federson came up with an interception of a Lester pass, and now Appalachian is trying to cash that turnover in for a touchdown. Uh, they have moved to the VMI 12-yard line following that interception. It's second down and six. Both teams, Sam Smith, moving the ball very effectively on the ground so far today. They are indeed, and, and they're they're mixing it up. Uh, VMI even has thrown the ball very well to kind of complement the running game. So on second and six, out of the eye, the handoff goes to Woods, the fullback, and he turns it inside the 10 and takes it down to the 8. And he is close to a first down, but it's going to be third down in less than a yard. Now, both these teams have really showed a lot of spirit this year. VMI started the season 0-6, but they didn't pack it in. They turned right around, and today they're facing Appalachian. This is the sixth-ranked team they've faced this year. They have played a lot of tough football in the second half of the year. Appalachian need a win today to keep their slim playoff hopes alive. They've had the, not the kind of season they anticipated. Now the handoff goes to Woods again, and this time the defense for VMI is definitely up to the task. It's Cornell Lewis coming up to make the stop from his cornerback spot. Well, they're anticipating VMI to kind of look for something wide coming to Scott. And again, they just hand it off inside, and you see Kareem Young just cannot find anywhere to go. Great close down defense that time by VMI, closing with the linebacker Andre Curtis. Curtis came into the game with 80 tackles playing their strong side linebacker. Had another great spring as well for him, and that's one of the reasons he's doing well now. Jay Sutton's had a great year on field goals. Shoots it up and good. He is now 13 of 14 on the season. And Appalachian State now has the lead. 10-7, 13-14 to go in the first half. We'll be back to Boone in just a moment. Investors looking for signs of intelligent life are advised to look closer to home for effective financial strategies, personal service, and the expertise to help manage a full range of investment opportunities. You need look no further than Interstate Johnson Lane, a leading southeastern investment firm. Interstate Johnson Lane. Introducing the greatest hits of Three Dog Night. 30 spectacular hits on two cassettes or two CDs. The ink is black, the page is white. Just an old-fashioned love song. Mama told me to come. Tell me how the lights shine and the halls of Shambhala. Great hit. 
based on two cassettes or two CDs. Here's how to order. To order three dog night for only $16.98 for two cassettes or $19.98 for two CDs plus $4.50 shipping, have your credit card ready and call toll-free 1-800-533-1400. Call from the U.S. or Canada. That's 1-800-533-1400. So Jay Sutton, the field goal from the senior from Wingate, North Carolina, has provided the lead for Appalachian first time today. They have a three-point advantage on VMI. 10-7, 13-41 to go in the first half. Alan Gwynn is set to kick the football off for the Appalachian State Mountaineers. And we anticipated that we see a lot of yards, see a lot of points, and so far we have, Sam. Well, it's, it's one of those games that the defense is kind of like uh, darn if you do and darn if you don't as far as trying to stop the run. You've seen both of these offenses use the pass rather sparingly for ASU outside of the big long gainer. But the running game is going to be the name of the game for this very, I think, fast-moving game today. Line drive kick. And it's taken at the three-yard line. And on the return, Farabee races the football up across the 25 to the 26 yard line and that's where VMI will take over. A VMI this is going to be their third possession of the game. They've showed the ability to move the football. Their first possession ended in a touchdown. Their second possession they drove deep into Appalachian State territory until Gordon Federson made an interception for Appalachian. So see what's up this time on their third possession. Scoring drive for Appalachian 11 plays 46 yards five and a half minutes Sutton with the 27 yard field goal to cap it. Lester with the fake to the fullback fights his way up to the 29 yard line. That's going to be a gain of three second down and seven for Lester. Lester's got a great knack of uh, just really kind of feeling uh, and you just this is something you really it's very difficult to say he's either got it or he doesn't have it. You can teach a little bit about reading but if you don't have that uh, ability to do so those linebackers will come up and really give you a smack. But uh, Lester's done reasonably good certainly in his junior year starting his second season with them. And now we've got movement in the line and a procedure penalty coming up against VMI. Kind of unusual. VMI, one of the least penalized teams in the Southern Conference. Here's the call. Dead ball. Ball start. Offense. Second down. This is meeting number 20, by the way, in the all-time series. Appalachian owns a 13-4 lead in the series with two ties. They've won 10 of the 11 meetings, but the last meeting between these two teams here in Boone was very memorable. More on that in just a moment. And the handoff right up the middle, that's Haskins. And Haskins is back up near the original line of scrimmage. Give him the 27-yard line. It's going to be third down and nine. The announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by Sports South and the Southern Conference. Any use, rebroadcast, or other use of this transmission without the express written consent of the, of the Sports South network and the Southern Conference is strictly prohibited. So, Sam, for you, that means selling VHS tapes out of your trunk in the parking lot. That's out. Took another means of uh, livelihood away, didn't you? <laughs> That's, what, that's the that's the stringing out defense right there. ASU has got to do yep. against Haskins. Never gave him a chance to make a cutback. Two good blocks ahead of him, but all of the defenders ran right through him. Watch number four in black, Ken Bird. He's back after an injury, and he's making a big play here on Haskins. Again, watch as they just turn him in. He goes outside, keeps going, going. Bird says, "Hey, I've got a teammate over here. It's called the sidelines, and you saw who helped him. That's Copley coming over to finish the dude." Howie Loudon's in to punt the football for the first time today for VMI. Net punting has been a problem, frankly, for the Keydets. We'll see what happens here. Set to receive the kick is Desmond Adams. Oh, he got that thing to turn over, driving Adams all the way back to his 30-yard line. He avoids the first wave. Check that. That's Burton receiving the punt today. They've, we've had a change receiving that's Burton, and Burton did a, did a good job. That's a 16-yard punt return. We'll step aside momentarily and return to Boone in a moment. Appalachian, oh, and a 10-7 lead. If General Nathaniel Green were alive today, he would show his grandchildren all the exciting places in and around the city named after him. The general would stroll through the gardens and the art galleries, the museums, and the malls. He would sample famous North Carolina.